Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode, we've got this curious contract here, uh, which says perform radiation scan while docked with Euphrates Station. Apparently, it costs us 68000 to do it, but it'll give us 84 science and we'll get back our 68000 if it fails. I don't know, and it only gives us 25 days. That's just too complicated for me. Um, initially, when I had popped in here, I had seen a um, contract to resupply Euphrates Station, and that would have been better, but apparently that one has gone. In any case, we will start off by doing a crew rotation of Euphrates Station, because the crew on Euphrates Station seems to have a lot of radiation. But I have a little bit of a problem with that. Another thing that I want to do is this map 16 asteroids endangering Kerbin with a Sentinel infrared telescope. They give us 832 years to do it, but it's really lucrative, and we don't have that much money to be honest. Uh, not when you think about upgrades to buildings and such. We still have a few of those to do. And this has a lot of science attached to it too. So, yeah, we'll pick that one up. There's, there's plenty of time to do it. Um, but the thing is, I don't know how to check the radiation of my Kerbals when they're not already tasked to something, right? If I click on Euphrates Station, then yeah, we can check it over here. And look at this, 44%, 39%, 41%, 45%, and they're in fully shielded modules, mind you. Um, so that's rough. I don't know exactly how long they've been out there, but... Uh, not too long, because Euphrates Station still has copious supplies. Uh, but in the astronaut complex, it doesn't tell me how much radiation they have. So we're just going to launch these three and hope that they don't have too much radiation on them. And this is the bopper uh, with four boosters this time. I think previously I launched it with three. But here we go. And then maybe I'll cook up that Sentinel Infrared Telescope mission. And we do have an available transfer window to Drez. So I think that's an option too. I have no idea what I was doing last time. <laughs> and I know I know, I got the Gilly mission back, but um, if I had said that I was planning on doing something in this episode, I, I don't remember what that was. So we're, we're starting fresh. <laughs> okay, here we go. So Ribford, Fope, I mean... We, we've seen these out there before. Wow, two mustache goatee sort of thing. Let's go on. Uh, steampunk guys here. All right, anyway. No operational SS... Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, I thought there was a probe core on there. Hold on, let me fix that. Okay, all better. And I guess we can check right now what their radiation is. 1%, 0%, 0%. Really? 1%? How did... How how did our crews on other vessels get so much radiation when these guys... These guys aren't, you know, completely without any experience. Ridford's been in orbit around Minmus. Um, Fobri here has planted a flag on Minmus. And Doman here... Well, Doman is a newbie. Just orbited around Kerbin. But, you know. Anyway. Okay, whatever and launch Ooh, I forgot these these are reliance I should have gotten swivels instead since I went to four boosters it's gonna be tough to steer this is just telling it to hold on to surface velocity it's not doing that very well oh shoot uh, oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, don't flip, don't flip. <laughs> okay, booster set. I still haven't added any of the mods I've talked about adding in here. Obviously... No restock or KAS or KIS just yet. Maybe I'll, in fact, uh, add them during this episode. Uh, now that I remembered, maybe, maybe I ought to try it. So we're we're going well here, and then I'm going to after this mission. 
come back in with the new stuff, maybe. Okay, we've made orbit. Let us transfer to Minmus or see how that's going to be done. And hmm, the offplane transfer is pretty darn close. Let's see. Okay, let's say we get there, and now how much delta v do we need to? Eh, it doesn't really matter. So we can do this without a mid-course adjustment. It'll take a little bit more than usual to make orbit around Minmus, but we should have that because we've got a bunch left in this stage. And separation. Okay, that will be a start. Let's head on over there and deliver this crew. Now, of course, we're only replacing three of the Kerbals on there. Um, so one of them, let's see, who has the least radiation? Jessely has 44%. Sherber probably ought to come back with that 15% stress. 41% for Bob. 45% for Deafen. I mean, Sherber has the least radiation, but the most stress. Hmm. So we're crossing the radiation belt. This only has half shielding on it. And we'll be sure to transfer the curls out of this pod, just in case. ECLSS malfunctioned on Gilly Mission 1. Well, there's nobody on Gilly Mission 1 anymore. We can repair it though, I guess, and then we ought to probably get ready for further missions. Maybe we should send it on to Drez, but then again, it's not the most useful thing. We probably ought to send some scanner on to Drez first and science missions. We don't need to send, you know, a station, an unoccupied station at that over to Drez. Closest approach distance is 3.8 kilometers already. Okay, entering render range of the station. It's quite a big pause these days. Okay, and let's match velocities. Okay, where can we dock this time? We've already got a lot of stuff on the station. Uh, I think the slot opposite to the other crew vessel is probably okay. Oh, there's that stuck thruster. Yeah, we really need to get KIS and KAS in order to deal with that. Okay, well, the new mission is docked. Let's gather up our old crew. There's no crew in that command pod right now. Okay, so one scientist needs to get out of here. Hope this was running. Well, it says data empty. No samples to analyze. That was quick. I hope we got the science from it. So hard to keep track. Okay, um, Bob, we were going to leave. Deffen gets transferred here. Okay, and then... I forget, uh, Ribford is an engineer, Fobri is a scientist, so Fobri will go there. Okay, so they're all in here, which is the old pod. And let's get the newbies transferred into this. Okay, and again, this has full shielding. This has full shielding. Um, Currently, uh, so uh, let's let's get the. Can we get the date? Can we get the date? It's year ten, day two seventy. Okay, year ten, day two seventy, and currently Ribfort has two percent, Doman has one percent, and Fobri has three percent. So we will keep track. Now, does this have? This has plenty of liquid fuel and oxidizer. Okay. So we're going to unlock this side. Yeah, we have enough food, water, and oxygen. That's fine. Hopefully a month will do the trick. 
Okay, so we are on our way back with these guys who are severely irradiated. <laughs> severely. Okay, the crew is departing Minmus after a pretty long stay, though I don't know exactly how long, to be honest. Okay, approaching Kerbin. Gotta say, the moon looks really, really close to Kerbin like this. Feels like some sort of illusion, but... Well, now it looks a little bit further away, but initially it was looking really close. Looks like we're going down on the nighttime side. Okay, decoupling the service module. Let's try that again. Hopefully that... Yep. I'm just gonna arm the parachutes now. Oh, I should retract the antennae, we'll lose them otherwise. I'm surprised we didn't already lose that one. I think we might have lost... yeah, we lost the other side. Okay, we are through the heat and it looks like fairly flat terrain up ahead. Okay, parachute deployment is good. Okay, we are on the ground and recover vessel. So, successful crew rotation from Euphrates Station. And we've got some advancements. Not that much XP gained, really. But, alright. So now, let me take a look at that whole Sentinel telescope business. Okay, so I've decided to add KAS and KIS, as I mentioned. So we've got the EVA items from KIS and these KAS items, uh, but KAS did say it was 1.5 compatible, not 1.6, but I think it'll be all right. I also updated module manager to 4.0.2 because the current version of Kerbalism says it's okay with that. So yeah, so we're going to trust that. And here we have our Sentinel mission. Now I haven't really launched one of these on my own planning. Before. I have launched one for somebody else, I think, uh, in a collaborative career mode, but this is the first time I'm going to be doing it um, as part of my own plans. So hopefully I've got this right. And we've got two antennae for solar panels, lots of solar panels, really too many. And we've got the redundant um, propulsion system here, two ants uh, alongside the spark engine. And that should be enough on a fairly simple rocket here. Now, uh, people do uh, tell me to use high quality, but let me explain the math behind high quality. <laughs> I mean, I guess uh, I, I, I probably should make the Sentinel telescope high quality, but I don't expect it to um, be needed for that long. Let's take a look at, well, it says standard quality 8 years, mean time before failure, and in high quality is 35 years. Uh, maybe that's worthwhile. Okay, so we'll make that high quality. But consider the antennae. Well, with the antennae, we, we're going to have two of these because they're radially attached and so symmetry, I mean, I'm not placing them like at the top. So just for balance sake, I'm going to have two of them. And if you take a look at the mean time before failure on the communitron here, it's 15 years. So that's pretty long and way longer than the... The expected mission time for this mission. I don't know how long it takes to scan uh, the unknown objects. We need a total of 20 or so of them. Uh, let me take a look. Uh, but yeah, I've never done this before. Oh, sorry, 16. 16 of them. 23 was the inclination that they had to be at. So, which is interesting because most of them seem to be at like the same inclination as Kerbin. So I don't know how that's going to work out. But anyway, um, I don't know how long it's gotta take, but probably our antenna is gotta be going first. I mean, the meantime before failure is tough to tell. It's a statistical thing, uh, so there's a probability it'll fail at some point. But the point is that here the cost of making this high quality is equal to the cost of another antenna, and the extra mass is less, so that's good. But we just have two antennae. And so we've got a redundancy, and as far as I'm concerned, considering the mis expected mission time, I don't think it's going to be a problem. And so yeah, 
Anyway, and besides, it doesn't guarantee a lack of failure, it just reduces failure. So we're going to launch this and see what happens. I mean, the high quality option is enticing, but uh, it's best not to overuse it. Besides, uh, half the fun is in the failures. If I wanted no failures, I just wouldn't have Kerbalism in the first place. So, SAS on, throttle up, displays, regular displays. Okay, and launch. It just had uh, altitudes above the sun that were required. It didn't say that it had to have a particular location. So there's no special timing necessary. Oh, 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 no, 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 ah, uh, big fairing. Ah, <laughs> uh, and SRBs are complicating matters. Okay, let's coast a bit. And let me just manually take it. Yeah, it was an awkward rocket to begin with. Not entirely surprised it would flip, but... There was a chance it could have held. Okay, dumping the fairings. Ooh, awkward. It occurs to me the reaction wheel in the probe core isn't particularly great. Not the most powerful reaction wheel ever. So our target orbit is between Kerbin and Eve. Basically a height of 11 million kilometers will do the trick. Okay, well, we need to head out basically backwards. So starting around here-ish, maybe we could have just launched directly into an escape orbit. Okay, we don't need to get too far. What we need is one end to be at 11 million. Well, that's not what we need. Basically, that's sufficient. We could probably make it more affordable in terms of delta V, though I don't think it's going to be a huge problem circularizing at that level. It'll take a bit of time to actually place this in a circular orbit there. That right there is just going to take 473 meters per second, so we definitely have enough. I suppose one thing I could have done was put uh, a reaction wheel, because just in case the reaction wheel on this probe core fails, that's one thing that I could have done with. So far I haven't seen a probe core itself actually fail. I wonder if earlier probe cores are more prone to failure and later probe cores less so. Haven't really checked that. Okay, well, it shouldn't take too long to do this. Well, 11 seconds for the most of the first half of this burn, so. But it's gonna take us some time to actually turn. And next stage. At this level, actually, um, just using a single ant engine is, of course, more efficient than having the spark. But because we wanted redundant systems, I could have put an ant engine at the center, but yeah, I guess if you gotta put more than one engine, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that's uh, 11 million 104 ish, and what they wanted was 11 million 104 ish. So, okay. So over here, we're going to bring the orbit down, and they want 10,924. Well, we can fine-tune it on the fly once we get there, but basically that is the idea. So let's add that alarm for that maneuver node, and it's on its way. So we'll take care of it once it gets there, and hopefully it'll still be all right. I don't know, I guess we can s oh, it needs to be activated in solar orbit. Okay, well that's fine. Log observation data? Nope. Alright, so we will get our science when the time comes. 
Now I want to, I guess, launch a scanner over to Drez would be the best thing. I'm a little bit worried about Bob on the Euphrates station. Um, maybe we should take a look at least at doing an EVA at Euphrates station for that one thruster port. Let me visit that first and then we'll take care of the Drez mission. Actually, it occurs to me now that we don't really have a Kerbal with any tools. Um, Ripfer, Tier is an engineer and everything. But I don't know, maybe... I don't know if anything can be done about that RCS thruster block. Let's see. Maybe he can self-destruct it, disassemble it, or whatever they call it. I forget if that was a KIS, KAS, or USI thing. Well, he's as close as he's going to get to it. And no, apparently he cannot disassemble it. He does have an inventory, but he doesn't have tools. Yep, tool needed. Okay, so we're gonna have to send tools over here. Um, I've already sent something over to this station in this episode. We'll send the tools over in the next episode. Let's get on with the Dress mission. And maybe with the tools we'll also bring back uh, whichever Kerbal it was. Bob. Bob needs to come back because he's got too much radiation. I'll try and remember to do that in the next episode. Let's see if I do. Okay, so our Dress Scanner is just a modification on the Ike Scanner. It has two extra goo containers and then two extra instruments, the thermometer and the Geiger counter. I'm just contemplating whether to put a backup uh, propulsion system. It's only got one propulsion system right now, but um, I've got it set to quality high. I don't even know if that's necessary. Uh, if we take a look at the Spark, uh, it doubles the cost if we set it to high quality. And... Um, but two ant engines, uh, technically two ant engines are cheaper. So there is that. We could even tilt them so that they could be redundant to each other. In other words, only one is necessary. But, um... I think we'll just go with high quality on this one. It's probably overdoing it anyway. The whole meantime before failure thing is uh, interesting. I've added fins this time because we've already done one flip in the episode, <laughs> basically. Uh, but we should have enough Delta V to handle getting into orbit around Drez, which is what I want to do, in order to get this scanner working. So um, let's take a look at the timing. Yep, we're at the Drez transfer window. Let's take it outside. A lot of our probes have had multiple failures, and I just haven't taken a look at them. They're probably in a pretty bad state, but we'll take a look at them when the time comes. The dual ones might not even be in communication range. I, I'm saving up uh, science so that we can unlock the long range antennae at this point. We've got a uh, fair bit. Well, how much do we have? 706. We'll take a look at the tech tree after I launch this. So, all the details out, please. This is the only version in which Mechjeb just likes to close everything all the time and I don't know what's up with that anyway launch okay boosters are off and so are two fins it's fine the fins are going to be disposed of anyway Okay, separation. And we've got our cheetah with a whopping 4,000 meters per second fairing separation. Ooh, those didn't separate the nicest way possible. Alright, that's sufficient. Unfortunately, the apoapsis is a bit high, but still, we have oodles of delta V. Oodles to get to Drez and get into orbit around it. Alright, well, let's see what Mechjev has to say. Alright, 1,600 seems fine. That's a long trip, though. Hmm. I'm willing to pay a bit more for a shorter trip. You know, a shorter trip does mean fewer failures and everything. 
Wow, 2,600 though. That, that's too short. I wanted that our apoapsis. I want it just at our apoapsis. I think it's something to do with Dres's inclination. How much is this gonna cost to get into orbit here? Well, not much. I mean, 1,800 is basically less than what we've got in the probe itself. Now, this is not a polar orbit, but we could correct that. Um, basically, we can use this entire 3,300 to get there quicker. Well, there's only 1,332. That's not bad. And that's a pretty tight orbit right there. So that's, yeah, okay. I think this is doable. So we'll be rushing it, but it says that we can get there and still get into orbit with the delta v we've got. So that's a nicer approach. Well, as you can see, this burn is mostly about dealing with Dres's inclination. That's why it's pointed at the at uh, the normal marker instead of prograde. But we'll do what we can. Hopefully, it'll turn out all right. Well, uh, I think a little bit more and. Here we go. Ignition. It may be a little bit finicky, so I don't know if the burn's gonna turn out perfect or not. Gotta say, I don't even really see how this plot encounters Drez. I'm a little bit afraid that I was being lied to by the initial maneuver node. Uh, yeah, well, okay, hold on. Hmm. Yeah, how is that plot supposed to get us to Drez anyway? Oh, uh, well, things have not turned out the way I wanted them to. This was probably an overly ambitious plot anyway. Well, that's the end of that stage. I didn't even think that we'd be getting through it, but... I'll try and correct that out here. Okay, we have an encounter, but it's costing us 400 extra. Drez is always sort of cheating us like this, I feel. I've had this problem with Drez before. Always trying to get more Delta V out of us than any initial plot suggested it should. Okay, and now when we add the maneuver and capture, we're better off. Okay, so this will work. We'll have to check exactly what altitudes the scanner needs, but this combination of maneuvers we do have the Delta V for. So, this Drez scanner is on its way to Drez, and we will be able to make orbits, assuming our systems work out. In 95 days, we'll do this maneuver, but we'll leave this here for now, and we've got a bunch of things to do in the next episode. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.